pieces of land, whether it's a uh, division of fish and wildlife, division of ecological water resources, division of parks and trails, and finally division of forestry. So all of those lands uh, fall under this. And section B goes a step further with, uh, uh, with, uh, with prairie work. Uh, it goes uh, a bit further it's a, in, in defining, asking for appropriate diversity, and uh, our group wrestled with that, what does that mean? And then also not only state lands, but using state funds. So this is where uh, some of our partners uh, potentially become impacted, because any not only operational funds within the DNR, but outdoor heritage funds and uh, LCCMR funds go through the Department of Natural Resources and are there for state funds, and we interpret those as, as, as uh, uh, being implicated here. So let's dig into the best management practices and guidelines a little bit. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna hit on the high points. Um, I do have some of those documents here tonight and I can send them uh, electronically. So this is gonna be a, a, a very short primer. Before we, before we tell our managers about best management practices, restoration guidelines, the thing that we urge is uh, survey inventory monitoring. And it's really hard to know um, what impact you're having on the resource out there that you're managing if you don't know what you're starting with and, uh, and, and how those, uh, those species are changing um, after, after you're providing treatments. So we're strongly encouraging our managers to, to learn something about incorporating uh, inventory and monitoring of, uh, of uh, pollinator species. BMPs. So these are again. I'm going to I'm going to hit on each of the columns here. Is, is kind of a a, a management activity. The first one over there is uh, prescribed burning. Uh, with prescribed burning, um, the, the BMPs look for refugia. So those basically when you're burning a habitat, you want to uh, you want to have some some unburned areas. Uh, perhaps breaking the uh, uh, the units up into smaller burn units. Uh, skips. Um, that's a that's a term for when the, the fire moves around in, in a grassland and maybe it curls around and doesn't burn an area. You know, when I was a, a, a new manager out in the field 15 years ago, well, we hated skips. You know, you'd come back and you'd light strips and you want to make sure you get everything everything burned up good. Well, now we're learning that you know, all these skips uh, uh, provide uh, diversity and, and refugia. Um, and extended intervals. So a lot of times we burn um, you know, we're very often not burning nearly as much as, as we'd like to, um, but uh, uh, we're encouraging managers to extend some of those burn rotations uh, as long as they can still accomplish it or what, they're, what, they're, what they need to. Uh, mowing, again, refugia, uh, uh, creating a, or providing areas of uh, uh, unmowed areas. Uh, mowing after mid-September, if at all possible, if you still can accomplish what you want to accomplish. Uh, spot mowing, just where you need to. If you're mowing for invasive species, just mow the pockets of invasive species. And uh, encouraging our, our, our guys to, to partner with uh, local road authorities and, and weed inspectors to try to, uh, to, to cut down the mowing uh, uh, if, if it's not needed. Uh, grazing, uh, we're just now starting to use grazing in our, in our grassland management to create diversity, uh, providing for, for refugia. Refugia, see a, a theme developing here. Um, as as we treat lands, um, we're you know, we're really asking our managers to mix things up. Number one, and create refugia, so areas that aren't uh, that aren't uh, uh, treated uh, in a given year, so that there are pockets uh, of untreated habitat where uh, pollinators can repopulate uh, uh, the treated areas. Um, in, in grazing, creating a range of stubble heights and, and again mixing things up. Resist the urge to do what's easy and comfortable year after year, change, changing things up. Um, pesticide use. Uh, we really, uh, again, refugia, uh, provide uh, untreated areas and uh, really reminding folks to practice uh, integrated pest management. Targeting your species, targeting your chemical, using only uh, what is needed to accomplish uh, uh, what you need to. Um, and then finally, uh, uh, forest management activities. Uh, forest management activities are really, really driven by forest certification and landscape planning and, uh, and, and really stressing that, that land, that diversity, not only on, the la on a landscape basis, but on a site basis, and really avoiding um, uh, spring impact to 
to uh, habitats. That's the, the, the spring flowering plants are the ones that seem to really, really take it on the chin. Um, if, if, you're, if you're not careful, and those seem to be the, the most important ones for pollinators. Now I'll roll into restoration guidelines. Um, in short, with our restoration guidelines, um, we're, we're focusing on native plant communities. So what is the native plant community that is expected on the site that you are about to restore as, as a resource manager? And then establishing a species list uh, for that plant community. So what we're envisioning is a, a species list uh, and, a, and a, an electronic tool that as a manager, I'd be able to go into that tool and say, I'm gonna restore a mesic prairie, say on this site, because of where I am and the soil type dictates that it's gonna be a mesic prairie and it's in this county. And, and the tool should be able to, to come, not with, a, not with a seed mix, because our managers have pretty good ideas of seed mixes to use in these communities, um, but some additional species to look for. So a, a list of species that are important to, uh, uh, to, 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 to pollinators and add those to the seed mix. And, and then finally, uh, uh, as they uh, uh, create these plantings, um, pay attention not only to uh, uh, foraging habitat, which is what we tend to think about, uh, you know, flowering species, different colors, different flower uh, 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 structures, flower shapes and whatnot, um, uh, but also looking at nesting habitat, um, uh, planting bunch grasses, leaving exposed soils, a lot of the native bees uh, 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 nest uh, in the ground, and, and, and avoid clearing all of the, uh, the woody material. And what we've, what we've really found as we started wrestling with this assignment is that a lot of the things we were doing already were, were pretty close and in that we managed for diversity. And that the activities that, that we're really going to guide our managers toward aren't going to profoundly change how we, how we manage land. They're going to be more like small tweaks to just uh, uh, a term I've heard that I really like is stacking benefits. What, uh, what's, what's beneficial to pollinators is beneficial to birds, is beneficial to deer, is beneficial to just about everything else. So the current progress, I, I identified this at the beginning, draft BMPs and guidelines, that, that is complete. And we are in the review process of that. And I've got some, if, you, if you're interested in those documents, um, they're at that uh, table uh, in the back. And you can take a copy with you if you prefer electronic copies. Mike has a sign up sheet. You can write your name and, and your email address and I'll email them to you probably later this week, I'm out of the office the next couple days, but I will get them to you, I promise, if your email address, email address is valid. And uh, with that, we're, we are in the public uh, uh, review portion of this. Uh, it, we are in the last, uh, the last week of, of review. We're taking comments until uh, February 15th, so if you're able to uh, uh, review that document and, and, uh, uh, and wish to make comments, um, there is the... Uh, uh, the email address there, that pollinator.dnr at state.mn.us. And with that, I think the rest of you was, uh, was there a fiscal note with this? Uh, was there a, a funding source for this? Or is this about uh, kind of just changing the way, you know, the way you're doing the job? And, and the, the answer is B. Um, there, there, were no, there was no funding with this. And that was some of the worry of some of the staff is that, that this potentially could increase costs a little bit because we're talking about um, you know, smaller bird units and things like that, which means a little more prep time and, and, and things like that. But, uh, but again, I go back to the, uh, I, I think it's minor. Um, I think it's um, my, minor tweaks to what we're already doing. And they're minor tweaks that are, that are improving the habitat the way it should be. Um, so they're things that, that uh, uh, as an agency, I think we want to do anyway. Up front here. Is there a, a, a timeline, uh, other than for announcing the program, but a timeline for um, establishing, establishing benchmarks for these for your goals? The question was, is there a timeline for establishing benchmarks? Um, the only, there, there was no timeline.